you know, alhamdulillah, you know, it gives me a real great pleasure and I feel honored. Audhubillah min shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, manaja sultan and awliya. Because when I used to live in Egypt for five years, the on the birthday of the Prophet, they called Maulid al Nabi. Maulid al Nabi, the birthday of the Prophet. And it was such, it was so huge, they would go for days celebrating the Prophet's birthday, peace be upon him. And the people would go to all the holy places of his family, his grandson. Or his granddaughters, his nieces, his nephews, his great great, and they would be the whole country, especially in Cairo, they would be partying day and night, day and night, putting solid watts on the prophet, peace be upon him. And so here I am in that environment, a jungle bunny taken out of my environment put in that environment, only knew it from the feeling that it was wonderful. I said, this is wonderful. How do I relate this to our people? We're so far, far, far to the left and the right, and how do we begin to bring them to such a love and value for the Prophet of Allah Almighty? I was reading a survey in the one, I think it was one of the Times, the New York Times, or one of those, and it was talking about the 100 most influential spiritual leaders. Number one was beloved Muhammad, so it's about. Tabir! 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 Why can he be number one? the most influential, and they never talk about it. And they think Jesus Christ is, uh, 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 Islam is, is Allah or and the Son of Allah Almighty. So there is, there is something that they're hiding, they don't want to, some, it's, it's a design. It's designed to keep people backwards. Keeping them from being uh, 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 enlightened spiritually and growing up to be real men and women. There is a conspiracy. That is the worst conspiracy. That is the worst. Allah Almighty is writing La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. All of the prophets may Allah be pleased with all of them they all, Adam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Dawood, David, Suleiman, all of them have taken their lights from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They cannot be a prophet unless they're taking his lights. They have to accept him before they can be accepted as a prophet. Angel Gabriel came to them and Kid Alayhi Salam came to them to teach them when they were going through a process of learning who they are and whose they were. And yet, he didn't show up until after 124,000 prophets had passed, and then he is the seal of the prophets. What does that mean? Yes, it means that there is no more prophets coming. Why? Because when he came with the revelation that fulfilled the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, the, the purified pages of Abraham, that meant that that was the beginning of the end of times and progressively this world as we know it would decay and be finished and a whole new world order would emerge. 
Now, Allah Almighty through history has given sparks, warnings. Gave a warning during the time of Noah. And then after the prophet, many, many warnings have come. Many, many sparks, the Moors, the Ottomans. But now, this is going to be the first time ever that it's never going to fall again. See, the seal of the prophets mean there's no need to send any more prophets because that's it. I ain't sending no more. Why? Because it's the end. Allah says in Quran, and you need to value this. Listen to me with your hearts and not your heads. We don't come here to entertain you. We come here to train you for a time when everybody whose minds are not right are going to lose them. Allah says, His words, those who die in the way of Allah or slain in the way of Allah are not dead. You just do not perceive it. These are martyrs. These are martyrs. These are believers that believed in Allah Almighty, that believed in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that believed, believed in all the books, that believed in the angels, that believed in heaven and hell, that believed in the day of judgment, that believed in the resurrection. What about prophets? These are, these are not prophets that Allah Almighty says there is no death for them. What about prophets? My own experience, when I visited uh, Mecca and Medina, and usually the Wahhabis, they, they don't let you come up near the tomb. You have, he's buried here, the prophet's buried here, and then there's Abu Bakr Siddiq, that is Umar, they're all buried in the same place and it's, and it's a big gate. They don't let you go up to that gate. They keep you, they be whipping people, whipping people. Here we come, we on making a hajj. Here we going with our turbans on, outside. Of course, I didn't want to go near that gate because if they had hit me with that stick, I know what that jungle buddy would have done. <laughs> Allah is my witness. I ain't taking no more weapons. The guy jumped up off of the gate. He came running over to me. And immediately I went, went into ghetto mode. And they said, no, come, 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 come. He said, no, 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 no. No fighting. <laughs> come, please, please come. This is what Harvey bring me over to, bringing me over to the gate to stay there. I could have picnic there. Of course, I know that those who died away were lying not dead. What about the prophets? I'm with my prophet. He's hosting me. I'm so messed up. I'm trying to read Surah Yasin because Yasin is the heart of the Quran. And I'm reading the heart of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, who is the heart of reality for us. And I'm reading for him, and he's reading for me. And I see lights. I don't know if you. Back in the day, I'm telling my age, it used to be a Clorets commercial where it, when it was a bad breath, a circle come out, then another circle come out, then another circle come out. You know what I'm saying? Well, circles of light started to come at me and hit my heart. And when I prayed, someone came and put something over me. While I was praying. Did I look up? No, I didn't look up. <laughs> because it was too astonishing 
too astonishing. I've been asking, and when I went into the mosque, I could feel his presence so strong, I cried like a baby because I could not see him. I could not put my eyes on him. That's how, that's how certain I was of his presence and feeling his presence. It's like you're going, you want to see somebody real bad and they hide. Why are you, where are you hiding that? Come on out. I want to see you. I want to hug you. And we had a ball. We sat by his tomb and we had a ball. And it was three of us. <laughs> They were standing, there was so many people, this was during the hard season. And there was a lot of people that you would, they would come and they would go make, you know, they come through and they kept going, they had to keep going. They, they was pushing them, these guys were like hitting them and keep them moving. And we were standing there chit like, just chit-chatting like this. God said, he say nothing to us. Lord's my witness. Three of us standing here. So I'm looking and I'm seeing these people doing like this. Because they pushing, they pushing people. They pushing people down. They trampling people. We stand there. We just chatting. And one guy came and said, "Sir, sir, sir, what are you doing? Can you move, sir?" I said, "What are you? We move back." He says, "No, sir. You, we can't push you out the way. You're not moving." I said, "What?" The power of the prophet right there, holding us right there. We at the tomb. No, they coming to see me for real. They they not fake like these going around here. These are the real ones. They got the turbans on. They standing at my tomb. It was like we was kicking it on the corner side. The people were trying to push to get by, and they were jammed up. They couldn't. They couldn't move past, past us, and we had no idea. He says, "Who are you?" I said, "No, who are nobody? Who are you?" We were out in the, in front of the mosque, and some guy came up to us, and he said, they're sending me here to greet you. They call me the crazy one. And we all looked at each other and started laughing, crazy one, and turned back, he was gone. But they had sent him to greet us, and said, how will they come? You're welcome. I'm saying that to say the value of what we've been directed to and guided to, don't take it lightly. Don't be like this poor man that he used to go and he used to beg for food and he found a diamond. And he took that diamond to uh, a spoon maker and he gave that diamond to the spoon maker for a spoon so that now he could have a spoon he, when he see, saw some food or he went somewhere in a food line he could just dip in with a spoon he was, he was, it was convenient that spoon maker took it to a jeweler the jeweler gave him some coins gold coins and that jeweler took it to the king. The king made him one of his wazirs, one of his, gave him a high position and gave him hospitality and he could do anything. That, that, that diamond is, Ill, is still in Turkey. Top copy, it's the largest diamond ever. So this man didn't know the value of what he was given. See, the people that know the value of something, they're going to treat it differently. They're not going to take it lightly. Shaitan never, ever wanted us to even get what we're saying now to you. All the trials and tribulations of being in Egypt for five years, then trying to, trying to get out of Egypt, was very difficult because they were holding up my papers. I finished dental school then, they were holding up my papers. So I had to come home, then I had to go back 
after five years for a week to get all of my papers. And they, and that, they would let me practice. They just didn't give me my papers so that I could bring it here so I could work here. So I went there to get my papers. This is when the final week that I was there, after five years, the last seven days that I was there, that's when I met Sheikh Nazim and Allah gave him a long life. Amen. Amen. Everything that I had gone through and going to the holy places and realizing that those who live for Allah Almighty, there's no death for them. I had to experience that and know that. The Quran, I had to experience and know that. Because the Quran, Islam, is spiritual. It's not physical. Even though it has physical manifestations, it corrects the physical. It directs the physical to be in submission to the spiritual. So this is why so many changes are going on in life. Because it will be as Allah Almighty life. It will be la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Whether we want it or not, whether we like it or not, regardless of what is happening, what you see in the world. Because Allah Almighty is raising up real soldiers. And they are spiritually connected to Allah and His Apostle. They don't fear nothing, they don't grieve over nothing. Their only job is to establish that that Allah Almighty sent it, and they're, they're able to do it in every way, shape, or form. They attract the people that they need to do what they need to do. But when permission, and when Allah gives permission, it comes in floods. Yeah. Now it's coming, drifting, 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 and it's going to speed up more and more and more. Because this rabbi, we told you about this rabbi. This rabbi said that he had saw Esau ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ, in a dream. That was not Jesus Christ that he saw in the dream. Jesus Christ in Islam would not show his face among the nation of Muhammad Islam except when he come, when he to come to do what he needs to do. Then he's not going to be of his nation. He has no nation. He's going to be of the nation of Muhammad then. He's going to take his Kalima Shahada. And he's going to be of the nation of Muhammad. So he ain't flashing up like he got it going on. So what they're seeing is they're saying they love Muhammad because this is his nation. This is not Moses' nation. This is not Jesus' nation. This is not Abraham's nation. This is not Adam's nation. This is not Suleiman's nation. This is the nation of Muhammad Whether they call themselves Christian Jews or whatever, black, white, red, yellow, brown, or whatever they call themselves, even atheists, they are his nation. And it's going to show up and show out through those who are connected to their, to their heart. To, to their heart. Because you can't stop them. They can't be stopped. And when we see and know the value of them, we cannot be stopped. And that's what's happening now. Every day we see how the world is beginning to decay. It's decaying. It's decaying. People are having, uh, they're going into comas and they're coming out of comas and they say they saw this bright light. Or oh, when they die, they come in and they come back, they temporary death, they come. We saw this bright light. It's not a lot that they're seeing. They see the light of beloved Muhammad. So it's like they see the new Muhammad. Mm -hmm. This is all they're seeing. And they're feeling such a love and a warmth. And they're talking about it. And they're saying, oh, it was Jesus. Oh, it was God. No, it was not. It was beloved Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's his nation that's rocking this. He is rocking everything. Everything was created for his sake. We're here because of, his, because of him. The creation, the world, the universe is here. Allah created it for him. Everything. Now you cannot put a time on patience. Because he didn't go through 124,000 prophets. Waiting for his time. 
Now waiting for his time that it will be on earth as it is in heaven. He is still among his ummah. Inshallah, we're asking him to come to sp spend time with us tonight. Amen. This is easy. It's so easy. You only have to ask. Who's asking? Nobody's even asking. Allah Almighty, the old, the, 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 the omnipotent being. No one is asking Allah Almighty for anything except through crisis. No one is, is asking the prophet. Allah Almighty made all of the universe, all in the heavens and the earth, all the angels, all the jinn, everything has been ordered to praise him. Praise the people of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because of his value. Anytime you say one salawat, Allah Almighty gives you ten blessings for every salawat that you say. Probably during this month, if this is his month, maybe Allah is giving for every solid what that you say, a hundred blessings. Blessings come all kinds of ways, all kinds of ways. It comes to make the human being his existence or her existence happy. Allah knows what we like. So I am honored and I am so proud of my Lord and my prophet and my shape that we're able to bring it to a people who had lost all guidance. Tabir! Allahu Akbar! Tabir! Allahu Akbar! Tabir! Allahu Akbar! Ha! Totally, totally raped of everything. Mind, body, and soul. I, when I look at that reality of how we were taken from the con, I can't even, I can't look at it. It's hard for me to, to see what the atrocities that happened to us as a people. But I know that Allah Almighty is going to compensate us for that. Amen. This is what gives me the resolve. I know that through my being, my existence. But Shaitan had such a hate on us, such a jealousy of us. And he knew that Allah Almighty was going to bring from a people that had always been sincere to him to bring people back. And it all makes sense to me now. So when Sheikh Nazim came here and gave official permission for what he said, it made sense. The training is to bring us to that reality. Sent the best trainer that you could train on the planet to train us here personally. His son-in-law, Sheikh Hashem. Shaky Sham ran all the fake people away. <laughs> like Amina's doing. This ain't fake. Ain't nothing fake about this. See, one thing about it, I knew I wanted my Lord. I wanted my guidance. No, nobody or nothing could come between me and my guidance. God is how they came on me. I had to take the same... Uh, 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 the view that Prophet Ibrahim had. It's enough that Allah knows I'm here. You are not here for me. You are here for you. Use your wisdom and be able to take what you need to grow up. If we have a feast here of food, the food is here for you to eat, to take nourishment. Don't come here and leave stupid. That's going to be your fault. We pour our heart out to you. Have done that for over 20 years. 30 years. With passion. With relentless. Consistent. 
unwavering. And you've seen the people that come through here. You've seen them come and go. You've seen them come and go. My thing is when I see people come and say, I'm going to see how strong they are. See if they can handle this. Only the men and women will be able to handle this. Only the sincere men and women will be able to handle this. Because this training is beyond this world. Our connection go all the way back to Allah and his apostles. That's why when we know that, we know the value of that. We are happy. We don't fear or grieve. We are happy. We are confident. And while we're waiting, we know when we're waiting, when it hasn't happened, the physical actions have not happened the way we think it should happen, by us waiting, we are in worship. We're being blessed as we're waiting. Because we're in worship. That's called worshiping. We're waiting for Mac and Isa and Salam. And we're sincere about that. That's Iman now. If you're not waiting for Mac and Isa and Salam, then you don't have no Iman. Why are you what you're here for? When you understand that and you keep that, your mentality is going to be different. Your physical body is going to be different. Your soul is going to be different. Worshipping is not going to be a burden to you. You're going to know that every time you're worshipping, Allah Almighty is giving you something to, so you may worship more. And as you worship more, you get, get more and more powerful. Then angels start to come around you more. You know you have to keep your mind clean, your body clean, your soul clean. Put on nice smelling uh, smells on you so you may feel the vibrations of angels always around you. Every time you go out, they're lined up for your protection. Good gin. Protection. You're in contact with the hearts of the prophets because they're not dead. Ain't nobody, all the righteous people, all the righteous people not dead. All the unrighteous, all the unrighteous people, they're not dead either, but they're locked down. It's like prison. They're in prison and they're waiting for judgment day. They're waiting for their trials. Whether they're gonna stay in that place or Allah Almighty let them free. Some he's gonna let free. Others are going to burn because some are going to be fuel for the fire. And when there's some of them come to come out, they're going to have written across their forehead unbelief, kafir. Because they didn't believe in the world. How can you be in this world and not believe that there's a, 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 a supreme being? I mean, if you don't even know the name, you know his name. Just look at the order in the universe. Just look how people, are, the intelligence that works, even if it's wrong. Even if it's confused or lost, there's something working, this energy. What's this energy that's working? These people bringing them from looking like tadpoles in a mother's womb. Now they start getting some shape and start looking halfway decent. And be talking smack. But they become adversaries to Allah Almighty. Because they don't know the value of the existence. They don't listen to guidance. They hear guidance, but they don't really listen to guidance. See, when those prophets, when Prophet Abraham and Moses and Jesus and all, they always talk about, all of them talk about the secret behind the secrets behind the secrets. These were secrets about the seal of the prophets coming in the last days. This was a big thing. This was huge. This was like part of a seals. Who is it? So then now, in the, in the New Testament, they mentioned in, in, in Revelation, they mentioned in the coming of the Lamb, they mentioned the, the man of sword. We know exactly what they're saying. But they don't know what they're saying. So that could be for any time. They just, well, okay, well, uh, there's uh, uh, convulsions of the 
of the earth and there's so many different signs like what well, that's been happening for a long time. It's like I said, this righteous rabbi who was the head rabbi, a very spiritual person who lived to be 108 years old, and he wasn't wasting his time. He said he had a vision, but even he didn't know what that vision was. Here you are on a whole nother level. And we're not scholars. But you know what the truth is. You know the secrets that they were searching for. Here we are in it. We in the search. We, we, we are the secrets. Going about in everyday normal life. Riding the, 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 the public transportation and going to the schools and going to the ball games and everything. Here the nation of Muhammad in exile around is is but we don't know who we are. Shaitan has put so much self-doubt and fear in us, even if we are told we don't believe it. Because our actions don't tell. Our actions, uh, our actions uh, show that we don't uh, believe. Even though we are that one, we are those people, what's the benefit if you can't believe it? Because your actions don't show that you believe it. Once you start to believe who you are, that's when you start to attract the power to be who you are, to do who you are. And you can't explain it. Do you think Musa Islam could explain when he had to part the Red Sea? Pharaoh in hot haste on him, and he had to part the Red Sea. Can you think he can explain it was, was, well, how did you know? I mean, this, everybody, we was all up against the water, and we all knew that Pharaoh was coming on us. And some of us started saying, well, you know, it wasn't so bad. At least we were getting three hot, three cots and a hot, three cots and a, uh, three, a hot and three cots, or three hots and a cot. <laughs> <laughs> We was eating, now we're going to be drowned. Is you mad? We did all of this for this to be drowned. Then, as we told you before, a horseman came up to Musa al-Islam and he said, Nabi of Allah, which way? Musa did that. He rode across his, he got on his horse, he rode on top of the water with his, on his, with his horse. What do you think the people said then? Thought it was magic. Wow, that's a good trick. But still, I'm not able to do such a thing. Then another one says, oh, Nabi Allah, which way? And he, horse dived into the water and went to the bottom. They thought he drowned. Look how Allah tests, man. I'm going to tell you. No, Oh, Allah ain't no joke, boy. And those who keep their iman, they say, oh, Allah, as you like Allah, if you put me in the lowest of hell or the highest of as long as you mention my name, as long as you know that I'm here, it's enough that you know I'm here. That's it. That's all. Those are the ones that Allah got control of everything. Because they trust them. They trust their Lord. We don't trust yet. So the Prophet Muhammad, he said his, about his nation, he came to give to his nation what all the prophets received and what he received. Now that's love. That's love. So the kind of life we're supposed to be living, we ain't living it. When he went up to the Israel Mirage and Allah says, who are you? He said, you. He said, say, I'm the prophet. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a people lie, you know. You know how we've been rocking it. He said, you. And he said, oh Allah, this meeting 
uh, that you are giving me. Give this, I want this also for my nation. And Allah said, no, they have to be, if they're going to be like you, I'm going to give them what I gave all of the prophets before you and what I've given you. Amen. Now here we are being invited to that. Do you want to return to Allah Almighty without that? Yes, what? Not me. I told my shake, shake, whatever you got to do to get me with, I took my shake's foot and put it on top of my neck. Where everybody witnesses. I said, Shake, whatever you got to do for to me to get me where I need to be, to have that, that's it. I'm surrendered. He did that. He says, no one will be able to put his foot, put their foot on his neck. Shaitan, nobody will put. That was it sad that they didn't think about it. How did I think about it? How do you think I thought about it? That was my reward. He put it in my heart. He's training me. He's seeing me keeping the training. Then he put it in my heart. I mean, he's giving association. Who goes up there and take their foot put on somebody's neck? He's giving association to all these people. I crawled over there on my chest. Crawled over there. Picked his foot up and put it on my neck. And the people like, we're astonished. And he told them, Shaitan would never have a power over you. I mean. Never have a power over you. Because the one who's sitting in that seat, the shadow of Allah Almighty and his apostle, they have power over Shaitan. I mean. When he was in a seclusion with his Shaykh, Grand Sheikh Abdul Dagestani, may Allah raise his rank higher and higher and higher. Amen. Sheikh Nazim said they was in seclusion. And he heard something screaming. Ah! And, 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 and Sheikh Nazim said, he wasn't saying nothing. He, got, he was scared of me like, Sheikh, what was that? He said, Shaitan is crying because we have power over him. He's crying. Can you imagine that? He has tricked Adam and Eve out of paradise. He didn't have his way with all the prophets, right? Now, someone who's not a prophet <laughs> got his foot on his neck. And he's like, what? Who ordered this? <laughs> Am I not the Lord on earth? I don't think so, Papa. This is why my training had to be as it been. We still here. We see people coming and going. I'm looking for real men and women. We give you love. Where can you get this love anywhere else? You don't get it anywhere like this. If you can't appreciate this, then this is what you don't deserve. You will leave. Sooner or later you will leave. You'll be gone. Someone else will take your place. They'll have the opportunity. But at some point in time, it's getting closer now because just like Rasulullah told uh, this rabbi that when this guy passed away, soon after that, everything is going to be in motion. But it's like I said, before Esau, Ibn Maryam comes, Jesus Christ comes, Makhdi has to come. Before Makhdi has to come, we have to come up because we are the sign for this time. When they say the sign of the light of days would be that when the red turban started coming up in the new world. Here we are, boy here, turned upside down, being faced to worship something other than the law almighty, our slave owners saying to us, if you don't worship this blonde haired blue-eyed person on the cross and obey us, you know you've been disobeying God. And the thing about it is we believe it. When I came up, and I know many of you, you had a blue-eyed, blonde haired Jesus Christ on your wall. And we had one in my house. 
I always wanted to throw dots at it, but I just loved my mother too much. I knew she did. I just could I just just couldn't get into him. When my brother went to college and I visited him, I saw him, he had a, a picture of a black man with an afro. He had tears coming down his eyes and he had his hands up and I said, that's where I need to be. I said, man, I can relate to this brother here. <laughs> that's real talk in myself. So the reality of our people, we ain't accepting it. Who else gonna do it? Who else gonna do it? Who else can do it? We've seen everybody else that Allah Almighty put in places of leadership to lead the country and direct the people and correct the people and to help the people and they they, 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 they line in their pockets around the world. Big scandal in France, the president, court scandal. First lady all shamed and, 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 and embarrassed because her husband out, he's a leader, president, out flying around after the food. Crowds and hundreds of thousands of people ready to do what they need to do. All he had to do was give a good order for them to live a good life and he cheating the people. That's happening everywhere. A lot never sent politicians anyway. He never sent officials to do any doggone thing. Anyone that tried to go out for a position was ambitious for a position. He said, don't give it to them. Why? Because they was going for it for their ego. Same thing go for us. So we have to be humble. See, you understand, you have to understand that humility is a is a wisdom that you know that there is no God, but a lot is it. It's a being that created me, gave me all my, my, my faculties and a body and gave me a soul in this body and all I got to do is worship and be obedient and he will make this to be a power that is unimaginable. See, the best speech, see, the human voice is beautiful. You can hear a whole orchestra. And somebody that can sing, even in that orchestra, come out, ah, and they outdo the instruments. No matter how, how good a, a musician is, so that human voice just stands out. What about a human voice giving truth about their Lord with no fear? That has to be the most beautiful sound. Not only is it a beautiful sound, it affects our soul. It tickles our inner. Like I heard one lady say, it just affects me all in my secular really act. So where is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it affects. It affects us in that secular really act. <laughs> That's the value of our prophet who is here for humanity. But he said that Bilal already Allah on who was the call to prayer that used to wake him up, his descendants would be the ones who bring everybody back to Allah Almighty. Mm -hmm. That's our reality. Calling them back. Now here we are, we at the bottom of the bottom. We, did, we, we, we lowered in the bottom. We looking up at the bottom. And that revelation is that, okay, we be the ones that's going to be able to bring everybody back. And so everybody, if we're looking up to the bottom, do you think people looking for us to do anything? <laughs> they didn't forget all about us. Just like they forget that an earthquake can happen. In fact, there was a football game the other day, there was an earthquake. Guy ran a touchdown, there was an earthquake. It was that even though. Allah's mercy saved him. He could have, Allah could have destroyed all of them. But see, Allah Almighty, he sends, his, he sends his mercy first. He warns. So you have to look at it and say, you know, you can't leave, lose your hope because you don't know when the Lord going to raise you up to do something. You don't know. You got to keep on praying. You got to keep on worshiping. Because one day, Allah Almighty going to look at the bench and so 
Say, Sika. Takbir! 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 Ha! It was just, I was watching this. I was, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real fan of, of athletics because, you know, athletics is real. If you're good at it, you really put a lot of work in it, you know, and discipline, and you can't handle no fear. You got to have a lot of confidence. And I was watching this basketball tournament, and they were like getting it. And I, this guy who he had cerebral palsy, you know, and, 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 and he was in all the games, he was excited, he was, he was excited, he, and nobody wouldn't play him because he had cerebral palsy, you know. So somebody said that the crowd, he, everybody loved him. They said, put him in, put him in, put him in, put him in, put him in. They put him in and he shot a 50 footer. <laughs> Three or four of them in a row. Can you imagine? Look, look, look at his, look at his iman. Look at his faith. He always believed that he could do it, but nobody believed that he could do it. Then the last set up. Okay, champ, sick him. Hmm. Allah took an ant <laughs> that had water in his mouth. Was gonna put the that was going when Prophet Ibrahim salam, was going, they put that grill, that fire, and an ant was going toward that fire, and he was the ant was made from here to maybe California, and he was on his way to put the, 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 the with, with water in his mouth, and Allah asked the ant, where are you going? He said, I'm going to put out the fire of Prophet Ibrahim salam. For his sake, Allah put the fire out. What about us, an ant? That's why the whole thing in the ant. So, I ain't going back until I do a reach to what I'm supposed to reach. I don't Amen. care what nobody said. Amen. I'm gonna lay it on the line. I put the pet. If a lot don't exist, I'm gonna be the biggest fool on the planet because I'm gonna act a fool about this. This is real. Ain't nothing false about this. Amen. We see it all the time, and a lot saying we the ones that's okay. We look at it up at the bottom, gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Amen. If you don't think you're going to be able to do it, this ain't the place. Your heart got to be right. Your mind got to be right. You got to keep your body tight. You got to eat right. You got to live right. You got to do right. You got to want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. When you pray for yourself, pray for other people too. You got to show good manners. Good manners is good adapt. That is the fuel for the soul. That's, that's how the, the soul feeds. That's how it gets stronger. So that's why Allah ordered worship for us because that's a good thing. That's showing good manners to Allah Almighty. Or show good manners to people too. Because Allah Almighty don't need our worship. We need our worship. That's why a Muslim is free from harming someone with their tongue and their hand. That's why Muslims are never the aggressors. Don't run one down, though. Hmm. I promise you. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, pound a lot. Everything created for his sake. Amen. This is his birthday. Amen. <laughs> and he's present. Takbir! go to a battle and that's when they, they first started out. And it was like they weren't disciplined. They probably had some of their boots was untied. They probably had shoestrings through their pants. <laughs> they probably was like they didn't look like no army. And the courage was gonna come on them, was going to wipe them out. And what Allah did is Allah says in Quran, He says, Allah says, the two armies came together. And one army perceived that the other army was double. <laughs> Triple. <laughs> so the thing is, is that these people, the enemies of Islam, they saw. 
the, they saw the prophet peace upon him and the sahabas and there was about five, six thousand of them. They saw their number, the numbers of the Muslims doubled. Doubled their number. And backed down. Because they was cowards. They had no heart. But look what Allah did. See, Allah does everything. Jesus Christ says, I heal people by Allah's lead. I brought people with the table spread by Allah's lead. See, we do something great. We, we don't say it was by Allah's lead. We don't give a lot of credit. We think we did. We ain't did nothing. That's good adab. And see, that kind of adab that Esau and Miriam had is what's going to bring him back because those who misjudged him, he's coming back to clear himself, but he's coming back with a sword this time. He's going to walk up some churches and people are going to tell him to leave. <laughs> And they're going to be saying, leave in the name of Jesus. Stop for love. I came up in, a, in, in the, in the uh, uh, apostolic church. Went to a Catholic high school, African Methodist College. So I know the mentality. My family, many of my family members on my mother and father's side, Christians. I love my family. But they're going to have to understand, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That Esau and Miriam, Jesus Christ, is going to come to clear his name up, and they're going to have to fall in line if they're real believers in Esau and Miriam, sincerely, Jesus Christ, then they. Because they are, they're sincere, a lot of sincere people. My Sheikh used to teach me look for sincere people. Among Jews, Christians, black people, white people, red people, yellow people, look for sincere people. Because the law Almighty is it clots, right? So sincerity is sincerity. So we have to have a sound mind. Then you're going to be clear and you're going to be able to recognize shaitan in yourself and in others. And you're going to see when shaitan attack and he's attacking, attacking you through your brother or sister, you know that it ain't your brother or sister. It may you be your brother or sister's ego allowing shaitan to use them. So we... Back off and try to get out of that to unless we pursue. Then we have to neutralize it and then talk to them. Because Allah says, when they incline to peace, you do so likewise. They incline to peace, you ain't got to be stomping them. You so and so, you should have never that that's not that's not us. As long as they're arrogant and they're against guidance. And they're trying to harm you for no reason other than the fact that they allow Shaitan to use them, neutralize it, then feed them. They're going to be willing to talk and listen. We might have to do a whole lot of that. But Allah Almighty can do what He wills. A few a former time, a few a lot of time. Don't take a whole lot of people, just a few sincere people. Just a few people that don't have no fear or no grief. And they love Allah and they love their apostles. And they want to be good people. And they want to do what they were created to do. Those are the ones that Allah Almighty is going to use to shut this down. Chicago is going to be first. It's going to shut it down. It won't be as long as it has been. It ain't going to be another 10, 15 years. Huh? Now, I want to be in that number. My my, my, my nigga getting too white now. I mean, I what? I want to be in that number. I, I'm still young. What? Yes, huh? Yes, Run up on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> hey, this drum will knock you out. <laughs> so I'm like when I see my brother back there. <laughs> see, I got my brother. My brother got my back. I ain't scared of y'all, man. <laughs> I ain't scared of y'all young bucks. I got my brother back there. Look, you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. He know what I'm talking about. Bear with me today. It's the truth. I'm living it. So welcome everybody. Welcome. We we here to grow up. You know, and this is about what it's about. You just can't take this lightly. And you know, Assalamu alaikum and alhamdulillah. It's not Islam or going to the Juma. 
or whatever, liquor is not Islam. Islam is making this world the way Allah is apostle for the zeal to do it. It has to be a quiet city. We have to quiet the city. But to quiet the city. You can't be scared to do this. Allah is going to test you. Allah will test you all kinds of ways. Allah, what a lot Allah testing your heart. Allah always testing your heart. That's how the big boys used to do me all the time. I used to always go. And so they, the little boys, they, they didn't want to beat the little boys. They used to get me to go beat the little boys up that they couldn't beat up. Testing my heart. And I was scared. Yeah, I was scared. But when they hit me first, what? Then they transgress. <laughs> I've been a Muslim all my life. <laughs> Amen. So, alhamdulillah, pray that Allah Almighty forgive us and help us and Amen. give us strength. And we do not have fear or greed and we're able to do his will on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. To shut it down and make this a quiet city, a loving city, Islamic city. Amen. People loving their Lord, loving their Prophet, loving the Deen. Amen. Loving each other. Amen. Here and here after one and all topic of Fatiha. This is not our family. Alhamdulillah.
Tu Aburahim, Ya Musa Bibar Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwab, Ya Mukaliba Kulubi Wa Aul Absar, Ya Dalila Mutahayirin, Ya Gayatha Mustahayitin, Ya Ayu Ya Kayyuma, Ya Dajla Li Wa Alikram, Wa Ufawidu Amri Allah, Inna Allah Bisirun Bilibar, Rebbe Tashimikum Wa Sultan Al Ahri Manat, Fatiha Shumifa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Aylamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmikin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-Mustalqim wa sirat al-Ladina namta alayhim. Ghayru al-Mahdubi alayhim wa al-Adham.
Antifa. Bismillah, 
Kösz is sajnálsz be, hanem ezt utána lehetnénk azt tenni. Szenez volt a könyvén, megtilészlem, észre leszlem, kitilészlem, el fátihá,